and also with you. Welcome to Faith Lutheran Church. Today is the second Sunday in Advent. This morning, it's uh, time to listen to John the Baptizer doing the preaching. And you'll hear that reflected in the Gospel this morning. He cuts through the veneer of our piety and goes straight for our sinful, rebellious, wayward hearts and says the one word we don't want to hear, repent. And he points us to the one place our old Adam doesn't want us to be, our baptism. We know from the scriptures that Jesus himself said, believe and be baptized for the forgiveness of sins. And that's what we'll be thinking about this morning. In the church, we are preparing for the second advent of our King. We will soon be celebrating his first advent closer to Christmas. Now, let's do a show of hands. How many of you uh, think that Advent is your favorite time of the church year? Anyone? Anyone? So if you happen to, to miss last Sunday, which was the first Sunday of Advent, you do realize, of course, that we have the technology, and you could watch that first Sunday of Advent online in case you miss it. Uh, so it's there available. Now, you're probably wondering, Pastor, um, how come the tree isn't lit yet and the nativity scene isn't lit yet? I just, I would like to share with you why. Um, we're still in the season of Advent. It's a penitential season. And it's dark outside, and, but the world is filled with the hustle and bustle of Christmas. You're out there doing your Christmas shopping, you're getting all the ingredients ready for whatever baking you're still going to do, and your to-do list is insanely long. And the hustle and bustle and, and all of the things that are happening in the world. Remember, everything in the kingdom of God is so when you come to church, this is a, a respite from all of that emotion. Things are a little bit quieter in Advent, or at least part of Advent. Next Sunday is the third Sunday in Advent. And as you can see from the banners, the third Sunday of Advent is the Rejoice Sunday. In the midst of the bleak midwinter, as the hymn says, we take time on the third Sunday of Advent to, to have a preview of the final advent of our king and, of course, his first advent. That's when things will change in terms of his beliefs. So it's coming. But sometimes in order to really enjoy and appreciate that part of the advent, we go through this um, somber time. Hence the tree and the nativity scene are not lit till later in Advent. These are all the things that will be pondering our hearts and minds this day. Now we do have a number of birthdays this week, and one in fact today. Hello, Alvin Kitt. It's your birthday today. How about that? We'll, we'll, get, we'll be sitting at the birthday right away. Gail Abel, is Gail here? Okay. Her birthday is on the 8th of December. Aileen Janky, is she here? Okay. Her birthday is on the 9th. And Fern Wagner. Hello, Fern. She's not here. She's not here. <laughs> Her birthday is on December the 10th. So let's sing happy birthday um, to everyone. Take a moment to greet each other in the Lord's name. 
Uh, you can wave to the people on the video who may be watching at a later time, and then we'll begin our service. So let's take a moment to each other. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue our fine practice of singing the Advent theme hymn, verses 1 and 2.
approach our cognitive tone of the race. Together we pray. Gracious, Gracious Father, because our entire lives are to be ones of repentance, we bow before you and confess our sins. We have turned away from the truth of your word, choosing to go our own way. But by what we have thought, by what we have done, and by what we have failed to do, we have broken your commands and are deserving of your wrath and punishment. By the mercy of Christ, your Son, set us free from our captivity. Enable us by your Holy Spirit to live under you in your kingdom and to serve you in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, just as Christ is risen from the dead, he lives and reigns to all eternity. It is most certainly true that he died and rose again for you to make you right with God, to adopt you as children of the Heavenly Father, and to set you free from sin and death. As a called and ordained servant of the Word, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. The hymn of praise is omitted during the penitential season of that. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to make ready the way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may be enabled to serve you with pure minds. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We hear God's word. Isaiah chapter 11. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see, or decide disputes by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his waist, and faithfulness the belt of his loins. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat. And the calf and the lion, and the fattened calf together, and the little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the cobra, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. 
they shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. In that day the root of Jesse, who shall stand as a signal for the peoples, of him shall the nations inquire, and his resting place shall be glorious. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through the endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another, in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may, with one voice, glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ became a servant to the circumcised to show God's truthfulness in order to confirm promises given to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, Therefore I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing to your name. And again it is said, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples extol him. And again Isaiah says, The root of Jesse will come, even he who arises to rule the Gentiles, in him will the Gentiles hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. And that is from Romans, the 15th chapter. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Bible. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the third chapter. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah when he said, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path sway. Now John wore a garment of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region about the Jordan were going out to him. They were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able to, from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. We join together in the sermon here. <coughs>
Well, as I mentioned at the outset of the series, John the Baptizer is going to do all the preaching this morning. But here's the thing with John the Baptizer. He may not be someone you like. You may not approve of his diet of locusts and honey, his garb, or his message. Here's the thing. The religious people of his day really didn't care for John. He called them what they were. A bunch of snakes. So I guess you can hardly blame those religious people. If you were to walk down Preston Avenue this morning, you might even mistake him as someone who was homeless. And truly he was, in a sense, homeless. He was a man of the wilderness, living out in the desert. John grew up in the wilderness, more than likely raised as an orphan, because as you'll recall, his parents were of a vintage, elderly age. Remember Zechariah and Elizabeth? They probably died before he got too much older. And so John comes preaching in the wilderness. He is the voice spoken of by the prophet Isaiah. So, like any rebel, any questionable character, the religious of he catches the attention of the higher ups. And he does so with the religious authorities of the day. Of course, they conduct an investigation of him, and they ask him point blank who he was. They ask him, are you the Christ? Are you the prophet? Are you Elijah? Who are you? I love John's answer. I have a voice crying in the wilderness. A voice. John was a mouthpiece. God's megaphone. In fact, if you paid too much attention to John, you were liable to irritate him, and you wouldn't want to do that. You can just ask the Sadducees and the Pharisees. Now you're probably wondering, Pastor, what does all of this have to do with the season of Advent? A lot. I mentioned this morning, and I mentioned last week, Advent is a time when we look at our lives with a sober second thought. And we heed the call of the message of Advent to repent. The prophet Joel actually says, Rend not your hearts, sorry, rend not only your garments, but your hearts as well. In the Old Testament, it got to be bad in terms of worship. People were doing worship for the sake of show. So they made a big display of ripping their garments in half, showing just how terribly repentant they were. And the prophet Joel notices this and he says, wait a minute. Don't just rend your garments, but your hearts. In other words, not show, but also know. Your lives and the actions of your lives must, must match, must match your words. So, let's come back to John. John appears in the Jordanian wilderness on the east, <coughs> pardon me, on the, <coughs> John appears in the Jordanian wilderness on the eastern side of the Jordan River. It was the very same place where Elijah had gone off to heaven in a fiery chariot. It also was the place where Israel had crossed the parted waters of the Jordan from the wilderness to enter the promised land. The symbolism here is just perfect. Now John was calling Israel back to the waters of the Jordan, back into the wilderness. He was calling them back to their wilderness roots, 
away from the religious structures and institutions of the synagogue and the temple, back to where God had made them a unique people. In Jerusalem, they had become complacent. Worship was something to do, not something to change your life. And so John calls people to repent and be baptized. That is his message. That's how he prepared the way of the Lord, which is what Advent is, preparing for the King who is to come. Who came once, in blessing he will come again in glory. This is how people are prepared to meet the Lord. Preaching and baptizing. Does it sound familiar? Well, it should, because that's what the church does in end times. The church is the end times version of John the Baptist, calling the world to repentance, and the church, by the way, to repentance, urging the world to be baptized in order to escape the wrath that is to come on the coming day of the Lord. Well, I wonder what John was to, to show up on a Sunday morning and what he would say to us here today on this second Sunday of Advent where we've devoted this Sunday to him and his preaching. John was all about the baptizing. He is called John the Baptist, after all. And John would certainly have approved of our confession of sins and sinfulness at the start of every one of our worship services. In fact, he probably, he might notice that we probably haven't fully plumbed the depths of our sinfulness. That sometimes we are a bit trite and superficial in our confession. Many even give us the same evil eye that he gave to the Pharisees and Sadducees, who hid behind all their so-called good works and their heritage. And John the baptizer might say to us, you bunch of Lutheran lizards, bear fruit in keeping with repentance. Show me some fruit. And don't start <coughs> Going on about Father Luther and how you've been a Lutheran all your life and how all your doctrine is all nice and pretty and how nice you are. Let's be honest. God doesn't need any of that or you any more than he needed the Israelites. He can raise up all the children he wants from a bunch of stone. That would put me in place. I told you you probably wouldn't like John, but that's probably what John would tell us. He would warn us not to rely on our goodness, our, <coughs> our holiness, our works, our piety, our prayers, our anything. If we haven't repented, we need to repent, to rethink and recognize who we are and who God is. In fact, that's the very definition of the word repentance in the Old Testament. It's a change of mind that then flows into a change of attitude, that then flows into a change of life. A change that says, I will not simply talk, but I will walk my faith. And even if we've repented, we still need to repent of thinking that a repentance is enough. If you're thinking you're doing, if you think you're doing, you're not doing enough. If you think you're generous and you're giving, you're not giving enough. If you think you're pure in thought, word, and deed, you need to repent of not taking the law seriously. And here's where it gets really interesting. John was the law, Jesus was the gospel. Pardon me, the law shows us our sin and our need for a savior. 
The gospel shows us forgiveness and our Savior. John preached the judgment and the wrath of God. Even his view of Jesus was one of law. His axe is laid to the root. He's come to chop down the unfruitful tree and throw it in the fire. He's going to sort wheat from chaff and gather his wheat in the barn and throw the chaff into the unquenchable's fire. John's baptism of fire was provisional, temporary, transitional, and temporal. Jesus' baptism was the real deal, the main event, the one that would separate sinner from sin. Now, surely you can understand John's confusion when Jesus came to him to be baptized. Imagine that. He knew who Jesus was. And he expresses his shock. Wait a minute. You, Jesus, the Lamb of God, come to me to be baptized? The irony is high. It wasn't supposed to be that. The sinner was supposed to be baptized by the sinless one, not the other way around. The servant should be baptized by the master. The lesser should be baptized by the greater. Those will come, and they are coming. He comes to judge the living and the dead. There is a coming fire that will refine the world. There's a final separation of sinner and saint that will finally destroy the sinner in Adam and Eve and raise a saint in Christ with a body that's fit for eternity. It's coming. But first, Jesus must undergo the judgment, the dying, and the rising. That was the part that John did not see and couldn't see. Like all prophets, he was right and yet longed to see the fulfillment of what he spoke. Here's the thing about the law of God, the Ten Commandments. It always prepares the way for the gospel. John prepares the way for Jesus. The commandment leads us in repentance to Christ. And where Christ is, the law is silence. Christ is the end of the law for those who believe. Christ must increase. John, of course, must decrease. John himself said so. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John can bring you to the Jordan. Christ will bring you to an even greater baptism. John can call you to the wilderness. Christ will bring you to the promised land. John can point the way. Christ is the way. My friends in Christ, I invite you in your Advent journey to follow John, this voice in the Advent he is your guide and he is not going to mislead you. Don't be put off by his rough clothing, his weird diet, his harsh preaching. Follow his gaze. Follow where his finger is pointing. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. My friends in Christ, in the midst of this Advent season, John is your Advent reminder that you need Christ. You need him more than you think you need him. You need him for much more than comfort, companionship, safety, and security. You need him to save you. You need him to die and rise with you. You need him to save you from the sin and death that would consume you were it not for him. And so John does us a service this morning. Cuts through the veneer of our piety and goes straight for our sinful, rebel, wayward hearts and says the one word we don't want to hear. That one word is repent. And he points us to the one place our old Adam doesn't want us to be our baptism. Here's the thing our sins are many, our sin is great. As children of Adam, we are doomed. But as John the baptizer, pointing at Jesus, said, 
Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. My friends in Christ, here's the comfort that comes for you this day. You are baptized into this land. I think last Sunday, somebody mentioned to me in the past, you, you always say that you are baptized. And you said in the sermon last Sunday, you were baptized. That was a mistake. You should not have said it that way. You are baptized. You are baptized into Christ. You are baptized into the Lamb. You are a child of God. And in Him, you are righteous and holy and sinless and safe. And now the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard and keep your hearts and minds in Him forever. Please stand as we join in the hymns. Jesus, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen.
Lord God, your Son rules over creation with justice and righteousness. And look, endow those in authority with the desire and the ability to protect the innocent, punish the wicked, and work for the common welfare. Lord, in your mercy, compassionate Lord, as we await the day when the wolf will dwell alongside the lamb, and pain and destruction are no more, grant us patience, comfort, and healing according to your mercy. Hear our prayers for the sick, those now recovering at home, including Tilly Kirby in her new home at Sunnyside Care, and Norm Buecher and Art Lyon, and give wisdom and skill to all medical professionals who have cared for them and will continue to do so. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, grant that we may be kept in joy and sustained in hope through every trouble and trial of this mortal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray the prayer of our Lord Thomas. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory, forever and ever. Receive now the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you. Amen. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. We join together in the closing. Mm -hmm.
So the only reason I'm up here still is because I didn't realize that it was so short. And by the time I get all the paraphernalia up here gathered and ready, I realized I would have been on the steps when the hymn was over. So, maybe I'll have to pick longer hymns now. Or another 17 verse. Yes. So, we invite you to reach the bulletin and find the information you need. Um, it's all there. There's more information coming. And I want to invite you to make sure that you read through the, uh, the mail check that comes out later today. Because there are more announcements that we didn't have room in the bulletin for, uh, along with um, service information and, and just a number of other things um, that didn't make it into the bulletin. So please take a moment to read through that. If you'd like to start receiving that weekly, um, it's basically a, a, a bulletin with extra material that you just put a bit. Uh, please send me an email and I'll make sure that you get subscribed to that list. Just a reminder, today is the last chance to sign up for poinsettias. Uh, there's a note in the bulletin about that. Um, so please take a, chance, a moment uh, to do that as well. All right, is there anything else? Am I missing anything else? Please. Yeah, a big thank you to Alvin and Kip for clearing the snow on the app. And that reminds me, there is a picture of Elvin in his outdoor office uh, that's in the newsletter. And so you'll, you'll see Elvin working away with his um, snow, what do they call those? Yeah. Well, the bob. Skid steer, you know those kind of things. Um, so there's a copy of the newsletter that's attached, or will be attached, to the email chip that is going out. And we'll have the paper copies ready next week. So I'll tell you more about that. Thank you, Elvin, for doing all that for us so that we're safe. Thank you. All right, we're following Sandy up this morning. Sandy, follow her out as you leave this 